like it. New, 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 new. Okay. First up. Got um, a little shortening adapter. Um, we have stocked these in a couple of different colors and designs for a while for use with like the Raspberry Pi uh, version one, which used the large um, SD card size. Um, this is basically like, this is actually designed for MacBooks, to be honest. Um, it's a uh, uh, half size, yeah, you can go there. It's a, it's a half size, um, SD card holder that has a little slot in the side for a micro SD. So this is different than most of the adapters that come with your like SD card or micro SD where it goes through the end and they're kind of long. This is shorter. Um, it's designed for MacBooks, but there's still a lot of like, sometimes we'll see, you know, um, like 3D printers or like other, you know, maker devices that um, have a big chunky SD card sticking out the side and maybe you want it to be a little more flush. Um, this one's basically half the width, so that's what you would use this for. Okay. Okay. Next Thank up. you. Next up, we've got the RCWL1601 um, sonar sensor. And if you look in the front of this, it says like Trig Echo Ground, which is like, oh, no, go back. I'll tap you in instead. Yeah. Um, this one, it's sorry, it says VCC Trig Echo Ground, and that's what like the standard like HC04 interface is for ultrasonics. And then you'll see like above that it says like RX and TX, so you could use it for UR, and there's also SCL SDA. And for a while I was like, oh man, like I wonder, like could it actually be used for I squared C? And it turns out that on the back there's a little jumper, and yes, if you move the resistor from UR to I squared C or IIC, like this one, um, the onboard chip will go into I squared C mode. Um, now I'll say one thing about it. It's not like super happy I squared C. It absolutely does work. It doesn't like to share the I squared C bus with other devices, or at least when I put an OLED on the same bus, it kind of locked up the bus. But as long as I kept it as the only item on the I squared C bus, it definitely for work, for sure worked just fine. And you might be wondering like, well, what's the point of doing it if it's I squared C and you can't like really share it with other devices? Well, there's a lot of microcomputers and microcontrollers that may not have a uh, fast enough GPIO to do the HC04 type trigger. There might be ones that don't have hardware UART. Maybe it's okay that, you know, you only have one device on the I squared C bus. I still think this is quite useful. And also there's a lot of microcontrollers that have multiple I squared C buses. So if we go to the overhead, uh, let me just auto focus this real fast. So here I've got a, uh, and then I'm gonna lock the focus. This is a Cutie Pie RP2040. So this and a lot of our other Cutie Pies have enough pins that they can have two I squared C ports. So the sonar sensor here is connected to power and ground and then the SDA SCL I squared C one port. And then the OLED here is connected to the STEM QT, which is the second I squared C port. And so you can see here, I've got a little demo going on where as I move my, hold on, I gotta like move my hand up and down, it's detecting the distance. And uh, this demo works great. So, you know, it definitely works with I squared C. It's a very simple interface. You can't change the address. Uh, it's a fixed address, but you know, again, there's going to be those weirdo cases where you're like, look, I really just want a low cost sonar sensor and I don't have anything else on the I squared C bus uh, that could possibly confuse it. Um, you know, it's very inexpensive. It's only a couple bucks to add a, uh, a sonar sensor and uh, it works with the classic I squared C. All right, next up. Okay, next up, we've updated the Cutie Pie ESP32 Pico. Um, which uses the ESP32 Pico chip. It's got eight megabytes of flash and two megabytes of PSRAM. It's adorable. It's an ESP32. Um, so if you stop here and you look, something's different. That's right. The USB to serial chip has changed. It was the CP2102N, but wouldn't you know it, there's a chip shortage. We can't get a lot of those chips. And so we've swapped it for the CH9102F. So this is a revision, um, but basically as long as you install the driver, for the CH9102F, you're good to go. It works exactly the same. It's a drop-in replacement. Uh, we tested it out with Linux, with a Mac, using the latest Mac OS and uh, M1, and with Windows, um, and it updates super fast, and it's super great. 
All right, and the star of the show tonight, besides you, Lady Ada, our team, our community, our customers, and everyone who keeps this thing going is... The uh, new updated Feather ESP32 S3. Um, now you might be thinking, hey, wait, this sounds so familiar. Didn't you put this in the store like a month ago? Yes, we did have a Feather ESP32 S3 in the store. The one that we put in a few weeks ago was the one with eight megabytes of flash and zero megabytes of PS RAM. And this one, if you stop and look at the back here, ooh, this one has four megabytes of flash and two megabytes of PS RAM. So basically half as much flash but a ton more SRAM uh, or PS RAM that you can access. Um, so this Feather, you know, basically the, this version of the memory configuration wasn't available until now. We recently just got this shipment in of modules so we could make this version of the Feather. Um, this Feather is going to be a lot better for use with CircuitPython, which uses um, RAM to store code in, or a, any Arduino project or ESP IDF project where you want a really big buffer of memory. You know, let's say you're downloading an MP3 from the internet or an image and you want to, or you're doing camera stuff and you want to buffer an entire frame in memory. Um, it does have 512K of SRAM, but that SRAM goes very fast when you're using SSL and Wi-Fi. So that PSRAM can be really good. You want to do emulation, uh, you want to do I2S audio buffering, you want to, you know, have, um, you know, again, camera stuff, you want to do, uh, uh, you know, double buffered graphics um, using the S3 TFT driver. Uh, the PSRAM version is where it's at. If you don't care too much about whether you have PSRAM or not, then, you know, the eight megabyte flash could give you more storage space, more flash space. Um, so we have both available for the Feather. Otherwise, it's basically the same board as the Feather ESP32 S3. You've got the module, you've got a, a boot button and a reset button. You got a QT port for connecting up our sensors, USB-C for data and power programming, native USB, um, the ESP32 S3 is a dual core, 240 megahertz uh, Tensilka processor. It's got Wi-Fi, it's got BLE, it's very fast. Battery charging built in, battery monitoring built in, um, feather layout, you know, just uh, compatible with all the feathers you, you know and love. It's a great little feather. Um, and now it just has PS RAM. So, you know, especially for people who want to use CircuitPython, uh, I recommend this one because CircuitPython, you know, you can load so much code into the PS RAM uh, that you have available on this board. And that is new products Boom. this week. New, 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 new,